Today we explore the beautiful country of Austria. Historically important over the centuries, the First World War began when one Austrian got shot, and the Second World War happened when another Austrian wasn't shot. You literally can't make these things up. We'll explore that tidbit of history and so much more, including answering the following questions. What nation of people do Austrians not identify with? Which Austrian brand has been caffeinating people around the world for decades? What major European dynasty was most associated with and rose to prominence in Austria? In what world-famous movie was based and filmed in Austria despite most Austrians never actually having seen it. We will be uncovering all of our favorite things about Austria throughout the episode, starting with its geography. I thought you loved me. Austria is a landlocked country in Central Europe that borders eight other countries, including Germany, Hungary, and Italy. In land comparison, it's about the same size as the American state of South Carolina. Nationwide, it's closest in size to the United Arab Emirates. The native name for Austria, Österreich, comes from the Old High German Österreichi, which meant Eastern Realm, and first appeared in the Österreichi document of 996. In terms of physical geography, Austria has several differing landscapes, but over half of its area is dominated dominated by mountains, specifically the Alps in the central and western parts of the country. Known for its natural beauty, some of the most famous ski resorts in the world can be found in Austria, such as Ski Arlberg, Kitzbühel, and any of 13 ski resorts surrounding Innsbruck, the Austrian city that hosted the 1964 and 1976 Winter Olympics. Innsbruck is also famous for its Imperial Palace, which was once the residence of Archduke Ferdinand II, and its Old Town or Altstadt, known for the world-famous landmark, the Golden Roof, adorned with thousands of gilded copper tiles. While its physical geography is often defined by its majestic mountain peaks, most Austrians live in the low-lying plains around the mountains. A good example of this would be the location of Austria's largest and capital city, Vienna. Located in northeastern Austria at the easternmost extension of the Alps in the Vienna Basin, we'll certainly be exploring Vienna later in the episode. Austria is home to 12 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Included among them are the Hallstatt Dachstein Zietzkammer Gut Cultural Landscape. A beautiful corner of the world, it's characterized by its picturesque villages, pristine lakes, rugged mountains, and rich cultural heritage. Hallstatt, a small village situated on the shores of Lake Hallstatt, is particularly renowned for its well-preserved historic buildings, salt mines, and archaeological sites dating back to prehistoric times. If you enjoy learning about all the beauty this world has to offer, please like the video and subscribe to learn all about our global community. The best part? It doesn't cost a thing. But what about the Austrian people? We'll be learning all about them next. There are over 8 million Austrians living on the planet with most living in Austria itself. I mean, why would you want to leave all this? We'll look at that not-so-rhetorical question in the Austrians Abroad section of the video. Despite their location on the map, it's important to know that Austrians do not identify themselves as German. That said, Austrians have historically been aligned with Germans, lived in empires with Germans, speak the German language, and even at one point identified themselves as German people. But there are differences between the two people that make the Austrians distinctly unique. With all that in common, why don't they see themselves as German anymore, you might ask? It seems to have a lot to do with separating themselves after World War II from the Nazi German stigma of a people bent on world domination and mass genocide by creating a national identity of their own. Fair play to them. Many famous Austrian and non-Austrian musicians have lived in Vienna over the years. The capital city of Austria has long been an important center of musical innovation, and composers of the 18th and 19th centuries were drawn to the city by the patronage of the Habsburgs, making Vienna the European capital of classical music. That being said, famous Austrians include musician Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, a legendary composer of the classical era. Born in Salzburg, Mozart showed prodigious musical talent from a young age, and during his short life, he composed over 800 works, including symphonies, operas, chamber music, and piano pieces, leaving the world a legacy of musical genius. Franz Schubert was a composer of the late classical and early romantic eras. His most famed and lasting composition, Ave Maria, showcases his emotional depth, and has become a fixture at weddings, funerals, and quinceaneras. 
Johann Strauss II, known as the Waltz King, wish I had a nickname like that, was famous for his captivating waltzes and operettas. His timeless compositions include the Blue Danube and Tales from the Vienna Woods. Outside of the music genre, notable Austrians include Arnold Schwarzenegger, who rose to fame as a result of his Mr. Olympia Bodybuilding Awards. He's also had highly successful acting and political careers. The former Terminator and Governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger was born in Thaw, Austria and lived in the Alpine Nation into young adulthood. Erwin Schrodinger was a Nobel Prize winning physicist and theoretical biologist who was best known for his thought experiment known as Schrodinger's Cat to illustrate the concept of quantum superposition. Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist and the founder of psychoanalysis, a revolutionary theory of the human mind and behavior. Freud's work explored the unconscious mind, dreams, repression, and the role of sexuality in human psychology. His ideas profoundly influenced psychology, psychiatry, literature, and popular culture. A person even Freud could not help was fellow Austrian and German dictator Adolf Hitler, who was born in the Austrian border town of Braunau am Inn. Despite spending most of his childhood in Austria, Hitler began to develop German nationalist ideas from a young age and expressed loyalty only to Germany, despising the declining Habsburg monarchy and its rule over an ethnically diverse empire. On a side note, as an eight-year-old in Austria, young Adolf took singing lessons and even sang in the church choir. It's not the most famous or infamous thing he did in his lifetime, but it's an image I couldn't get out of my head while researching Austria. Let's take a look at all the things that come from the wonderful country of Austria. Red Bull is a popular energy drink that originated in Austria and is now sold worldwide. Introduced in 1987, Red Bull is known for its stimulating effects due to its key ingredients, which include caffeine, taurine, B vitamins, and sugar. It has become particularly popular among athletes, students, and individuals seeking a quick energy fix. On a side note, can you imagine what Mozart's masterpieces would have sounded like if he were drinking Red Bull? Nice. The waltz is a popular dance and musical form that originated in the late 18th century in Austria and Bavaria. It is characterized by its three-quarter time signature and its distinctive step pattern. The waltz was considered scandalous and provocative when it was first introduced due to its close hold and rotational movements. Today you can see it on risque shows such as Dancing with the Stars. Another Austrian invention is the Glock Pistol, a series of semi-automatic handguns designed and manufactured by Glock Guess MBH, an Austrian firearms manufacturer. The Glock pistol was first introduced in the early 1980s and is popular due to its reliability, simplicity, and widespread use by military, law enforcement, and civilians around the world. A creation not made while drinking Red Bull was slow motion, an effect in filmmaking whereby time appears to be slowed down. It was invented by the Austrian priest August Musker in the early 20th century. And is helpful when editing. Among many other things invented in Austria is the fun dispensing candy Pez, the first sewing machine, and snow globes. Actor and filmmaker Corbin Burton is reported to have over 9,000 snow globes in his collection if you care, which you probably don't. don't close your eyes. Centuries before its modern identity, the territory we now know as Austria was home to diverse Celtic tribes, including the Iron Age Hallstatt culture and the late Iron Age Latene culture. Around 15 BC, the Roman Empire annexed the region and left a lasting impact by building cities such as Vindabona, present-day Vienna, and Huvavum, modern Salzburg. Following the fall of Rome, Austria witnessed waves of invasions until Charlemagne took control of the area in 788, making it a part of the Frankish Carolingian Empire. After Charlemagne's death, it became a part of the East Frankish Kingdom, which eventually evolved into the Holy Roman Empire in 962 when Otto I was crowned Holy Roman Emperor by Pope John XII. Ironically, it wasn't holy, Roman, or an empire, but I digress. What it was, was a confederation of territories and states governed by a loose framework of feudal relationships, laws, and traditions. The House of Habsburg emerged as a dominant force in Austrian history during the late Middle Ages with Rudolf I being elected Holy Roman Emperor in 1278. It laid the foundation for Habsburg rule over Austria for the next several centuries. An interesting family will dive a bit deeper into the Habsburgs near the end of the video. Religious conflicts such as the Protestant Reformation and the Thirty Years' War dominated the 16th and 17th centuries. The peace at Westphalia in 1648 ended these conflicts but weakened the Holy Roman Empire in the process. A few decades later, Austria survived the Battle of Vienna in 1683. 
Widely considered one of the most important conflicts in European history, it halted Ottoman expansion into Europe and preserved Christianity for millions of Europeans. Austria thrived in the 18th century under Empress Maria Theresa and her son Joseph II. During this time, Austria experienced a period of flourishing reforms and enlightenment policies. The 19th century brought significant changes to Austria, including the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire in 1806 and the Napoleonic Wars. After the Congress of Vienna in 1850, Austria emerged as a leading power in Europe, playing a key role in the concert of Europe in suppressing nationalist uprisings throughout its empire, at least for the time being. The revolutions of 1848 and the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 transformed the empire into a dual monarchy, granting greater autonomy to Hungary while maintaining Austrian dominance. Austria-Hungary ended up ruling a diverse area at a time when nationalism was gaining in strength throughout its empire. All the while, many Austrians longed for reuniting with Germany, a young nation they were kicked out of as a result of the Austro-Prussian War. The early 20th century saw Austria-Hungary annex Bosnia and Herzegovina in an effort to expand and to keep Serbia from expanding themselves. The move would have deadly consequences just a few years later. That consequence would happen on June 28, 1914 when Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir presumptive to the throne of Austria-Hungary, decided to visit Sarajevo and Bosnia. His goals were to commemorate the 1389 Battle of Kosovo, demonstrate imperial authority, and strengthen ties within the empire. Instead, he and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, were assassinated by Gavrilo Princip, a Bosnian Serb nationalist and a member of the Black Hand, a group that did not want to be ruled by Austria-Hungary. Following Ferdinand's assassination, Austria-Hungary held Serbia responsible, Serbia refused several of their demands, entangling alliances were activated, and before you know it, the world was at war, leading to one of the deadliest conflicts in the history of the planet, all sparked by the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Unsuccessful in World War I, on November 11, 1918, the Austro-Hungarian Empire signed an armistice with the Allies. The ensuing Treaty of saint germain en laye officially dissolved the Austro-Hungarian Empire and recognized the independence of Austria, albeit with a large amount of territorial loss. As the world was under the threat of another world war in the 1930s, Nazi Germany, under the rule of Austrian-born Adolf Hitler, annexed Austria in an event known as the Anschluss. Who says you can't go home? Reunification had been an aspiration among some Austrians and German nationalists since the end of World War I, and it became a reality on March 12, 1938. Under threat of military invasion and with little support from the international community, the Austrian government led by Chancellor Kurt Schuschnigg eventually gave in to Nazi demands. Austria remained under Nazi occupation until the final months of World War II when Austria was liberated from Nazi rule by the Allied forces. Austria was divided into zones of occupation by the Allied forces, similar to Germany, and underwent a process of denazification and reconstruction in the post-war period. In 1955, the Austrian State Treaty was signed, formally ending the Allied occupation and restoring Austria's sovereignty. The treaty declared Austria's permanent neutrality, which has been a defining aspect of its foreign policy ever since. Didn't mean those things, I'm sorry. Doesn't matter anyway. We Austrian cuisine is largely made up of influences from Central Europe and throughout the former Austro-Hungarian Empire. It is most often associated with Viennese cuisine, but there are significant regional variations throughout the country. Austrian food is known for having a lot of meats, cheeses, and carb-rich foods such as dumplings and pastries. Those are a few of my favorite things. Couldn't help myself. In terms of meals, Austrians tend to have continental-type breakfasts with foods such as bread rolls with jam or cold meats with cheese. In fact, a food most associated with continental breakfast, the Danish, is believed to have been created by Austrian bakers who brought the pastry to Denmark in the 1850s. The Wiener Schnitzel, which translated into English means Viennese cutlet, is widely seen as the national dish of Austria. It consists of a breaded and fried veal cutlet that is tenderized, typically pounded thin, then dipped in flour, beaten eggs, and breadcrumbs before being fried in butter or oil until golden brown. Variations using pork, chicken, or turkey are also popular. Another popular Austrian dish is Tafelspitz, a classic Austrian dish made of boiled beef, typically from the upper part of the sirloin. It is simmered along with root vegetables and spices in the broth. But where Austrian cuisine really shines is in its desserts. Examples include Apfelstrudel, or apple strudel in English, a pastry filled with thinly sliced apples, cinnamon, sugar, and sometimes raisins, wrapped in a thin dough and baked until golden brown. Kaiserschmarrn is a fluffy shredded pancake cooked until golden brown, torn into pieces, sweetened with powdered sugar, and served warm with fruit compote or applesauce. Sackertort is a rich chocolate cake with a layer of apricot jam and a smooth chocolate glaze. Yum! 
And finally, Viennese coffee culture is renowned for its elegance, tradition, and social significance. A unique experience, Vienna's coffeehouse tradition dates back to the 17th century when coffee was introduced to the city. Coffee houses quickly became hubs of intellectual exchange, creativity, and socializing. Popular places for artists, writers, intellectuals, and locals alike, Viennese coffee houses are recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. But who leads this enchanting land of apple strudel and coffee culture? We'll be exploring Austria's government and economy next. After centuries of being a part of an empire and even a dual monarchy, Austria is now a federal parliamentary republic with nine separate states. The president of Austria is head of state but mostly a ceremonial figure with limited executive powers. The current president of Austria is Alexander van der Bellen who has been in the position since 2017. The chancellor is head of government and holds the executive power in Austria. The position is appointed by the president and is usually the leader of the majority party or coalition in the National Council, the lower house of the Austrian parliament. The current chancellor is Karl Niehammer, who assumed the office in 2021. When it comes to the economy, Austria has a high standard of living and is consistently ranked among the world's most livable countries. Austria has a strong industrial sector, particularly in machinery, automotive manufacturing, metallurgy, and chemical production. Most important for Austria is the service sector which generates the majority of Austria's GDP. Vienna has grown into a finance and consulting metropole and has established itself as the door to the east within the last few decades. As for tourism, it accounts for over 10% of Austria's GDP. Just outside of the top 10 most visited countries in the world, over 30 million tourists visited Austria in 2023. At the top of the list of places to visit in Austria is, of course, Vienna. Top places to see in Vienna include the Palace and Gardens of Schönbrunn, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was the residence of the Habsburg emperors from the 18th century till 1918, and is home to the oldest zoo in the world, the Tiergarten Schönbrunn. They even have pandas there. The Ringstrasse, or Ring Road, circles the inner town of Vienna and passes along some of its most iconic places. It was built after the dismantling of the city walls in the mid-19th century, replacing the fortifications. St. Stephen's Cathedral is Austria's most prominent national symbol. Built in the 12th century, it is known for its intricately tiled roof and its nearly 500-foot-tall South Tower, which provides amazing views of the entire city. On a side note, visiting Vienna around Christmas keeps popping up in my research as a good time to go. Their Christmas markets are world famous. Outside of the capital, Hallstatt is a picturesque village located in the Salzkammergut region of Austria. It is renowned for its stunning alpine scenery, historic charm, and rich cultural heritage. The birthplace of Mozart and the setting for The Sound of Music, Salzburg is a picturesque city with a well-preserved historic center that is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Next up, Austrians Abroad. Most people with Austrian heritage living abroad live in the United States, Germany, and Canada. The Austrian migration to the U.S. started in 1734 when a group of 50 families from the city of Salzburg migrated to the newly founded Georgia. Having a Protestant background, they migrated because Catholics were being repressed in Austria. The immigration of Austrians increased during the second half of the 19th century for various reasons, and in 1900 there were as many as 275,000 Austrians living in the United States. Many Austrians worked in the United States as minors or servants with most settling in New York City, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. Beginning in the late 1930s, another wave of Austrians migrated to the United States. Many were Jews fleeing Nazi persecution, which started with the annexation of Austria in 1938. But the most famous Austrians to immigrate to the United States from that time were the Von Trapp family, immortalized in the 1965 film The Sound of Music. The singing family left Austria after Hitler's annexation of the country in 1938 and moved around Europe before settling in Stowe, Vermont in 1941. My family and I went to visit the Von Trapp family lodge last summer and were fascinated by the history of the family and the tour of the grounds. The Sound of Music is a classic worldwide, except in Austria, where few people have even seen the film, which makes for an interesting question to be answered in the comments. Why aren't Austrians interested in The Sound of Music? Notable people abroad with Austrian heritage include Hedy Lamarr, an Austrian-born American actress and inventor. She starred in numerous Hollywood films during the 1930s and 40s and was also an inventor who co-developed an early technique for spread spectrum communications, which laid the groundwork for technologies like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Famed dancer and actor Fred Astaire, legendary directors Woody Allen and Stanley Kubrick, Lord of the Rings actors Sean Astin and Elijah Wood, and actors Jeff Goldblum, Mark Harmon, Natalie Portman, and Leah Remini. I can't leave out former Secretary of State and presidential hopeful John Kerry and celebrity chef Wolfgang Puck. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. 
You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Up in my car. As a former restaurant worker, I have to mention that Austria is home to the oldest restaurant in the world, St. Peter's Stiftskeller in Salzburg. It was founded in 803 AD and is still in operation today, making it more than 1,200 years old. Among the many famous people that have visited, it is said that Christopher Columbus and Mozart dined here, on different days of course. And finally, the Habsburg dynasty, one of the most influential royal families in European history, rose to prominence in the late Middle Ages and became one of Europe's leading royal houses. The dynasty flourished in Austria from 1278 until 1918, when the last ruling member of the Habsburg dynasty, Charles I of Austria, abdicated the throne. Perhaps the most distinctive feature of the Habsburgs was their practice of strategic intermarriages with other European royal families. It was essentially their version of keeping it in the family, a strategy that was very successful in keeping power in Europe for centuries. On a bad note, this led to a high degree of inbreeding within the Habsburg line, creating various genetic disorders and physical deformities among some members of the family, the most well-known being the Habsburg jaw, a facial feature which the lower jaw protruded out way beyond a typical jaw. It created dental problems, speech impediments, and left you with a face only another family member could love, which I guess wasn't a huge problem considering they only married relatives. With all that said, Austria is an amazing country that continues to leave a lasting impact on our global community. Whether attracting millions to visit it each year due to its astounding beauty and mesmerizing culture, or by the innovations it continues to create to this day, Austria is a wonderful example of a land, culture, and people that deserves to be celebrated. Thanks for watching and joining us as we seek to better understand our global community. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs.